The Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, even through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan over all the abominations which are committed in its midst. But to the others, he said in my hearing, Go through the city after him and strike. Do not let your eye have pity. Do not spare. Utterly slay old men, young men, maidens, little children and women. But do not touch any man on whom is the mark. You shall start from the sanctuary. So they started with the elders who were before the temple. Those who are going on with the Lord, there's going to be such a change in you. You're going to be so different from the backslidden carnal crowd. You're not going to have a somebody have to tell you the difference. Everybody's going to see the difference. There's going to be a mark on you. You're going to be marked. All right, the judgment has begun in the house of the Lord. He said, I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will judge you face to face. Here comes one. This sheep says, I'll be marked. I've cast out devils. I've healed the sick. I've done many things. Man, I've worked for the Lord. I've worked my fingers to the bone. The Lord said, Pastor, don't mark him. I don't even know him. He's a work of iniquity. Pass it. Another comes. Oh, but Master, surely you'll mark me. You taught in our street. We eat and drank in your presence. The Lord said, that's right. You sat at my table and allowed Satan into your heart right at my table just like Judas. Pass. Pass. Here comes a little widow. Her heart sighs and cries over the abomination of the land. She can't even pick up a newspaper. I get these letters from dear grandmas from all over the country. But you ought to see the letters that we get from people who say, we're changing. We're changing so fast. Things are creeping in. Why can't the pastor see it? Why can't the church see it? You hear these little widows weeping and their letters are stained with their tears. And here comes a little widow. The Lord says, Mark her. Put a mark on her forehead. One by one. And those who sigh and cry over the abominations of the land, the Lord says, Mark them. I meet these people that are marked now. This mark of weeping and crying and groaning over the sins of the church. These who sigh and cry and weep over the sins of the church are those that feel His burden. We don't love Him like we used to. We don't grieve over the sins. How do you grieve over it when it's made its inroads in your heart? How do you grieve over it? You won't even know how to speak against sin. If you just stand and thunder it, then you... You're just going to bring death and damnation to people. It's got to come from a broken heart. You feel the lament of God's heart. And that's the reason I feel so strong about it. Tonight I feel the lament of God. I feel His cry in my heart. This is not a time, saints, to be bound in idolatry. This is a time to be weeping between the porch and the altar. Saying, Lord, cleanse me. Now this is repentance meeting. We've sinned against the Lord, folks. You know why I'm standing here trembling right now? I'm trembling because I stood before so many thousands of people preaching the gospel with an idol in my heart. And I was blind. I trembled tonight because for so many hours that I wasted that I could have been seeking the face of God. I trembled tonight because for all the singing and shouting and praising that I did, there was lust in my heart. Lust. Plain, simple, ungodly lust. Isn't that something for a preacher to preach to thousands and be bound by lust in his heart? God came to him one day and said, David, you won't pay the price or you're all on your own. You can have the crowds, but you won't have me. You're not going to come into my presence and minister to me. It's all over. It's now or never. And I heard that ultimatum. And I said, Jesus, I've come. 
to come in his almighty presence and say you're baptized with the Holy Ghost and raise your hands and worship the Lord when you've had your eyes corrupted watching those things that are out of hell. We're changing, folks. And the only hope is to have a radical turnabout and say, my God, I'll not play games anymore. I'll not justify my idols or my sin, my lust, my idols. Lord, I lay them down right now. And I promise you, if you'll deal with it tonight and you'll truly repent in your heart, God will set you free and He'll draw you in this secret closet. He'll send a spirit of weeping on you. Some of you haven't wept in months and months and years. There's been no weeping. There's been no brokenness. Holy Spirit, deal with our hearts. Turn on your light. You're going to mark those who sign cry with abominations in their heart and in the land and in the church. You're going to put a mark on those, Lord, who turn to you with all their hearts. God, bring forth repentance from our hearts. Let us truly repent before you, O God. Truly, truly repent before you tonight, Jesus.